Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We've been looking at a lot of Intel N100 based mini PCs lately, and I just got in a new one that's in a rather interesting form factor. This is from a company called Hia Luck, and this is a little NAS that they've put together that is powered by an N100 mini PC essentially, but if you pull hard enough, you can actually put in some SATA hard drives, similar to what you might do on a Synology or a QNAP NAS, and you can basically roll your own network attached storage device uh, with this NAS box that you can get from them. And this is gonna be a hard one to review because typically we have mini PC things to do when we get one of these things in, but this is really not designed to be used as a personal computer and I'm not going to review it as such. So what I thought I would do is look at the hardware today, look at what it comes with, and then we can think about maybe a follow-up video or two for some things to try with it in the future. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from the manufacturer. However, they did not review or approve what you're about to see before it was uploaded. No other compensation was received, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what makes this NAS box tick. Now, there are two different main configurations for this. This is the two bay unit, as you can see, and it will accommodate two three and a half inch SATA hard drives that snap in and stay in pretty securely. They also have a four bay unit if you did need a few more drives to play with. Now, the price point on this one here with the two bays starts at around $320. That comes with eight gigabytes of RAM, and 128 gigabyte SSD. The four bay unit with the same configuration costs about $100 more. I would likely go with the four bay unit if I was out shopping for this, just because it gives you much more flexibility in so far as how you configure your drives. But if you were looking for something simple, uh, just with a couple of drives, this will certainly get the job done for you. Now the RAM and the internal storage are upgradable. A little bit earlier on a live stream, we took the whole thing apart and the entire computer part of this is on a single board, as you can see here. It does have DDR5 RAM, and like other N100-based devices, it has only a single memory slot there, as you can see. So though it looks like you could fit two in there, there's only a slot for one. And then you can see the NVMe drive below it there. Now, reassembling the unit was a little tricky because the motherboard has to just kind of be held in place here as you slide the case back on to screw everything back together. So although the case feels nice from a build quality perspective, it is all metal, uh, it doesn't feel all that uh, confidence inspiring when you take it apart to start working on the components. And this is one of these things that's coming from overseas and it's from a brand you've never heard of before. So this is one of those instances where I suggest you buy at your own risk. And if you are doing something that is super mission critical, you might want to consider a network attached storage device from uh, Synology or QNAP or another company that has a little more experience in this field. But as something to play with, maybe as an inexpensive media server, I think you can have a lot of fun with this given how powerful these N100 chips are. Now, it does not come with your main storage here. So what happens is, is it boots off of the NVMe drive inside, and then you have to add your drives to the mix for mainline storage. What is nice is that these drive trays don't require any screws. It just snaps in. So that was kind of neat. And once you get the hard drive in there, you can slide it right in and then begin configuring it. It does come with Open Media Vault already installed on its internal SSD. That is an open source uh, Linux-based NAS operating system that runs headless. And I'll show you what it looks like when it boots up in a little bit. So you can get started with this thing right out of the box, but you can, of course, install your own operating systems on it if you want. In fact, a little bit earlier, I even booted up uh, Ubuntu Linux and just ran it as a desktop, which it was able to do. So performance-wise, it felt like it was performing just like other N100-based computers perform. So that was good, but again, this is really designed more as a little server than it is as a desktop computer, but you got the option to use it in a desktop environment. And to that end, you've got a good selection of ports back here, very similar to what we see on other mini PCs. So this will take a 19 volt power connection here with its included uh, wall wart power supply. You have two 4K60 video output options here, an HDMI and a display port. You can run two different displays simultaneously. 
Next to it, you've got two Ethernet outputs. These are both 2.5 gigabit running with an Intel 226V chipset. So that's good for Linux compatibility for sure. And then you've got two USB 3 ports that they say are 10 gigabits per second each. Headphone microphone jack over here, and then you've got an SD card slot here on the back if you had some cards to load into it. But that is it. There's no ports here in the front. It does have some venting here to cool off that N100 processor, and the fan in the back here draws all of that air out. There is a small fan on the CPU board, and I'll pull up that reassembly picture again here because you have to get the, uh, the plate there to align with the fan. They're not connected. So that, again, is uh, part of the issue that we ran into this thing, reassembling it. Uh, but when it's all connected there, it seems to be running fine. I did run it uh, overnight, and it didn't overheat or anything like that. So all good there. And the fan being rather large is not all that noisy on here either. So altogether, it's pretty much a mini PC with two or four large SATA drive options if you want to use that. My only other gripe here is that if you do decide to take the unit apart, you have to peel off the rubber foot here on the bottom to get to the screws, and you really can't replace that rubber foot without finding new adhesive for it. So you may want to get some of those little things you can stick on the bottom there if you do want to have ready access to the screws here on the bottom. Let me boot this thing up now and I'll show you how it works. All right, so we are up and running now. And if you don't reformat the drive on this when you first get it, it's going to boot up to Open Media Vault. And all you're going to see on a screen attached to this device is this command line login screen. There is no graphical user interface even after you log in. This is designed to run headless. In fact, the BIOS is configured to turn this on as soon as it gets power. So if you do lose power, it will come right back up again unless you disable that in the BIOS. Now to configure it, what you need to do is look for this IP address up here. And if you type that IP address into your web browser, you'll then be brought to the Open Media Vault control panel so that you can go through all of your configuration. Now during a live stream the other day, I added two hard drives, the two that are in here. We were able to verify that it does support hot swapping those drives. So if you wanted to pull one out and plug in another one, if you had a drive failure, you can do that. And then I went through and set up a file system on this. So what I chose to go with here, if I can find where I did it, uh, is set up a BTRFS file system, very similar to what we see on Synology NAS devices. I'm pretty sure I set this up as a RAID 1 configuration where one drive mirrors to the other. So that is something that I would recommend you do with your NAS just so you have a little bit of redundancy there. And then you can go through some of the other configuration settings on here. Open Media Vault has been around for a long time. It is pretty Spartan so far in my experience with it. This is the first time I've ever really played with it. Um, but as a basic NAS, its basic functionality is quite good. You've got your uh, SMB sharing capacity here. You've got NFS and R-Sync built in by default. So once you get up and running with it and you enable the SMB component, you can share this on your network with other computers. You can set up users and have different levels of access for different folders that you configure and all in. It works very much like other NAS operating systems do, just a little more limited. Now, although they call this Open Media Vault, getting Plex to run on this is a little more complex than it might be on a Synology or a QNAP or even on a regular uh, Ubuntu desktop interface. What you have to do first is get Docker installed and then install Plex on top of Docker. And the instructions for that on Open Media Vault are not difficult for somebody with familiarity with Linux and Docker, but for other folks, it might take a little bit more time to get all that going there. So one of the things that I want to experiment with this in a future video is putting Unraid on, uh, which is a NAS operating system that is a little easier to work with, especially insofar as getting additional applications installed. So that's something that we'll be playing with in an upcoming video using this device to demo it. But there are lots of other plugins that you can find inside of the interface here that give you additional functionality. And this is a very well-supported project. There was updates waiting for me when I got uh, this installed. In fact, one of the updates was fairly recent. So if you're looking for a basic NAS and you don't want to spend so much more for a name brand device, uh, this out of the box, I think, will provide a pretty good basic experience with an open source operating system. But because it's an Intel mini PC, 
You can run any flavor of Linux. Most of them are compatible, and there's lots of other options that you can find for putting NAS operating systems or even desktop operating systems on this device. Now, as far as power consumption is concerned, right now I'm drawing about 25 watts, and that is with the two drives in here spinning. So the four drive unit, of course, will consume a little bit more. The CPU right now is pretty idle at 0.7%. So this is a good indicator of what your baseline power consumption will likely be day to day, although it would go down a little bit if you uh, had those drives spin down. Now, as far as server performance is concerned, the N100 chip here is performing on par with other N100-based mini PCs I have looked at. I did run some benchmarks when I had Ubuntu running on here, and it was right within the margin of error of other mini PCs that we have investigated recently. One note, though, is that the storage array here, while connected directly to the motherboard, is not using any kind of hardware to manage the RAID array. It's going to be done at the OS level in software. So if you are switching between operating systems, you might find yourself having to rebuild the array each time because it is a, an OS software level thing and not a hardware thing. So just keep that in mind. It's pretty inexpensive, so that's what you're going to deal with. There will be a little CPU overhead involved with that software management, but it's no different than many of the other low-end NAS devices that are out there from Synology and others. Also on the Ethernet performance side, I did test both of the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet connections in the back. Uh, both were able to maintain a 2.5 gigabit symmetrical connection without issue. So all in, this is a fun little project PC. It does cost a little bit more than a similar N100 mini PC costs without the storage option here. But what's nice is that this is all self-contained in a single unit, and you can get the two bay or the four bay for that. So there's some advantages, I think, perhaps to getting something that's ready to go out of the box versus having all this stuff plugged in with USB cables. Uh, it is probably going to cost you a little bit more than it might to build it yourself if you're putting parts together, but if you were looking for something bread box size that you can just take out of the box and play with, here you go. Pretty cool stuff. So what are we going to do next with this? Well, I think I'm going to start playing with Unraid, and in an upcoming video, we'll get Unraid installed on this, and we'll also take a look at its Plex performance. But given the, what we've seen with the N100 on other uh, mini PCs, Plex is not a concern here. N100 and Plex go together quite well, and so I think this will make a very good media server, but we'll definitely confirm that uh, in an upcoming video while we play with Unraid, which has been on my to-do list for quite a while now. So that's gonna do it for this one. Let me know what I should take a look at with this in the future in the comment section below. And until next time, this is Lon Zybin. Thanks for watching.